You're welcome back. Now we've gone from the carefree lending of the boom to banks cherry picking the best customers to offer mortgages to. Now NAMA, in an effort to re-energise the property market, has stepped in and from October it's set to offer mortgage finance on hundreds of properties under a deferred payment scheme. But does this new initiative offer hope for buyers? With us is Angela Keegan of MyHome.ie and Carl Dieter of the Irish Mortgage Brokers to explain more. Good to see you both again. Good morning. Uh, Angela, explain to us how, how this is going to work. Well basically NAMA have 8,000 residential properties in Ireland in the 26 counties on their books and they're looking to realise the asset and they're offering uh, protection to would-be buyers against negative equity and the example I think that's commonly used is if you find a house that's on NAMA books for instance for 200 grand you must put down a deposit of 10% which is 20,000 then you go to one of what's been called one of the pillar banks either AIB, BOI or uh, permanent TSB you negotiate your mortgage for 180,000. 140 of that 180,000 is passed over to NAMA. You begin your repayments on your 180,000. After a five year period, the property is valued. If the value is the same or less, the uh, NAMA swallowed the 40,000, mm -hmm. so the bank doesn't release the additional 40,000 to NAMA, and the repayments are calculated for the individual on a mortgage of 140,000. So in that way, they're protected against negative e equity to the tune of 20%. Is it a good deal for the consumer? It um, sounds like it is. It potentially is. One of the questions I would have is there's 8,000 properties. How many of them are apartments? Mm -hmm. So I think the while on the face of it it looks like a good deal and certainly choice is always good for the consumer so the consumer now has more choice. Uh, I think uh, if a lot of the properties, and my suspicion is that a lot of the properties are um, apartments, apartment mar the apartment market is just on its knees. Um, people are just not buying apartments. First-time buyers are not buying apartments. And the scheme is not exclusively set up for first-time buyers, albeit it's very much aimed at first-time buyers. So if, it's, if the market is flooded with apartments, um, I think the the apartment market in general will fall even more and let's be honest it's fallen by I think it's about 57 percent mm -hmm. um, at this stage and uh, I, I don't think uh, first-time buyers will be lured into apartments when there is still in the market such good value to be had on the typical three-bed semi. The car, when are all these properties going to go for sale? I mean, 8,000, and are they all going to go for sale at once? Because surely that would, you know, completely no, flood the market and drive down prices further. If they did it that, yes, it would. They're hoping to sell about 5,000 in total, which would be a huge um, move in the market anyway, because this year we're only expecting to see about 11 or 12,000 mortgages drawn down. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the lowest figures perhaps since 1971 in terms of the no number of mortgages that will be created. I think that what might be good for the consumer might be bad for Ireland, though, because if we start to give out mortgages where a person is insulated from loss and they do realize a loss then someone somewhere has to carry that it will likely be NAMA and we're the ones funding NAMA mm -hmm. I think it's a mistake for someone to be able to buy a property and if the price falls that their equity isn't wiped out first NAMA are actually putting themselves ahead of the buyer so that they take the hit first and if you look at what happened in the likes of Sweden Finland and the UK during their property booms and busts back in the 1990s the actual bust takes place over about four to five years but then property remains undervalued for about seven or eight years after that so that twenty percent fall could actually occur it might put it below what is the fundamental or true value but it doesn't stop it from happening because it's confidence driven so i don't know if if i really have much faith in this people aren't looking for apartments and the fact is that a lot of the nama stock is apartments now yeah. we don't know the mix we don't know the ratio but chances are that it's going to be apartments that they release so you have to ask yourself who wants to buy them? Why do they want to buy them? And is the attraction going to be for the marginalized person whose real attraction to that property is access to credit as opposed to actually wanting to wanting live there? Wanting to live there, yeah. And should the government be intervening anyway in, the, in our property market at this point? Well, we already have. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a 56 billion yeah. euro intervention. Point, you know, after everything that's happened. I don't know. Uh, my, my personal feeling on this is that we're not going to recover until a few things happen. We have to get to some point where we hit a bottom. And people say, well, that's an arbitrary line in the sand, but it's not. When rental yields are hitting about 8% on average, you know that that's somewhere near the bottom because rental yields are not going to go to 20%. You're never going to rent a place for a fifth of its value. 
that's what we need to get to and that requires price drops it requires uh, banks taking some level of pain because people can't realize those price drops as long as it's a case where they're stuck in negative equity unable to sell there's a, at least a hundred thousand people in this country who probably would like to be out from under their mortgages who can't because of the current regime they're gonna have to wait for the personal insolvency bill in 2012 but I think NAMA, um, like I, I certainly welcome the, the NAMA move. I think it's better than doing nothing. I think at the moment they're responsible for, they're telling us, 8,000 residential units. They're unoccupied. There's a cost of uh, keeping them. Mm. There's social problems um, will absolutely emerge because of vacant units. And I think doing something, it may not be the, um, the absolute, uh, correct answer but I think doing something is absolutely better than doing nothing and I think you know in, in October when we see it there's a, they, they have said they're launching a pilot scheme in October it'll be interesting to see how many they put on the market what the demand is and I really think it's only probably the beginning of next year we'll be able to say whether it's working or not. I, I would imagine for that pilot scheme it will be apartments that will go up. Uh, and I would it, imagine uh, and, so before and they put the, the houses. Yeah, one, one what the they've spoken about so far actually is already yeah. apartments that they're, yeah. they're speaking about. So, yeah. and will it be easier for people to get mortgages if they're buying one of these uh, uh, properties <laughs> than it would if they were buying another one? So well, that is the, the the golden question. That is, you know, that's the mecca of <laughs> answers because we yeah. don't know. The fact is that they are relying on pillar institutions uh, mm -hmm. to provide this funding and the number of mortgages being created is down 90% from peak. The amount of finance being released is down 90% from peak. Okay. And I've said it on this show before, peak wasn't sensible, but 90% down from there is also ridiculous. We're facing total credit contraction. So is 80% of something not better than 100% of nothing? I think we, we, let's see what happens in, uh, with the trial. The one thing I would be concerned about is that this is not, as I said, exclusive to first-time buyers. First-time buyers is really who we need to be helping out yeah, here. Yeah. And my concern would be that investors are going to be the ones that are attracted to uh, the apartment market. Okay. And that will certainly help the investment side of the house, but it doesn't really help the property market in that first-time buyers are still left in the market. Okay. Let's uh, move on to property charges because this is a real thorny issue. You know, you know as you said, they shouldn't even be called property they charges. They, they should, I think that they shouldn't be called property charges or household charges, I think I'm, I'm hearing them called. We're all paying our bin taxes, whether it be for a green one or a black one. And now I just call it, it's a tax that's coming in because what we're hearing is, what we know is going to happen is every household uh, it will be... Um, expected to pay a hundred euro within the first three months of next year that rate has been set for 2012 and 2013 after which not only is there a property tax coming in but there's also a water charge coming in so this is a holding me measure in my view to uh, generate uh, income for uh, the government uh, I can understand that part but what I don't understand is whether you're you, you know you're, you're you're quite wealthy and you can afford it or whether you're absolutely on the poverty line and just you're making ends meet it's, it's the not same tax uh, applies yeah, it's not based on anything reasonable so really the way I describe it as is a way of getting money without having to yeah. wave a gun around yeah if it was based on water usage well then fine because I believe in water charges for this reason it costs money to get water to a house it's the same as it costs money to get electricity to a house and when we had water shortages last year during the, the, the bad winter that we had there were people that were running the tap so that their lines wouldn't burst and the person next line next door their their pipes burst but if you had a, a, a meter then it would at least make it that there's a cost to wasting mm -hmm. national mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. and there's not but what they want to do is get the money from people without af actually having to undergo the necessary work to do it right, which means installing a water meter. Okay. They want to get a property tax without having a property database that it's based upon. The so this is just a grab. It's not a household charge. It's a tax grab. Okay. I, I know where you're really running out of time. Who's exempt from us? Just before um, we finish. My understanding is uh, people on social housing and those who are getting assistance with their mortgage. But if you're on social welfare, you've still got to pay it. Yes. If you're a pensioner, you've still, you got, still to got to pay it, yes. Okay. okay. Well, Carl and Angela, as ever, thanks so much for uh, clearing some matters up for us this morning. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Now, don't forget, if you've missed any of the programme, you can catch it online, tv3.ie slash the morning show. And that's it for this week. On Monday's show, we'll be meeting 22-year-old Matthew Cavan, who is HIV positive and wants to challenge the negative attitude towards people with HIV. The Midday Girls are up next. We'll see you back here on Monday morning. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.